Dr. Knight, hello and thank you. Uh, my name is John, I'm a doctoral student here at Oxford and I'm from the USA. My question has to do with persecution, specifically how former Muslims are sometimes killed if they have chosen to leave Islam, uh, deciding that another religion is more true. For example, my girlfriend is Turkish and she lives in Turkey. She used to be Muslim, but decided to become a Christian after understanding Jesus in, in a new way as God made, made flesh. She has had fears in the past that she may be harmed or even killed for her decision. In light, light of the recent attention to this matter in Pakistan uh, with Miss Bibi and the blasphemy laws, my question is this. What are you doing or what do you plan to do to educate Muslims that if someone chooses to leave Islam, that person should not be killed? Well, that's a very important question. And he said that what if a person who's practicing Islamic faith changes to any other faith? Is it required that he should be killed? And all these articles that came about me, a preacher of hate, one of the point was that Dr. Zakir prescribes death penalty for those Muslims who leave their faith and they profess any other faith. Again, these reports were out of context. They took up a portion of my speech where I said that many scholars say that a Muslim who leaves this faith and professes any other religion, death penalty is the punishment. But I went on to further say that death penalty is not a standard punishment for any Muslim who leaves this faith and professes any other religion. I gave the example that one during the time of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, there was a Muslim who converted to another faith and had done some wrong deeds for which the Prophet had told they should be put to death. But later on, when Hazrat Usman, may Allah be pleased with him, he approached the Prophet and said that the man should be forgiven. The Prophet pardoned him. This incident proves that death penalty is not the standard rule for any Muslim who changes his faith. If he does some act which requires to be punished by death, depending upon the act he has done. But according to Islam and according to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon, according to me, death penalty is not the standard rule for any Muslim who changes his faith and professes any other religion. And that's what I've told in my talks. But unfortunately what they do, they pick up a portion of my speech from the YouTube and they show it to the Home Secretary and the Home Secretary believes it. What you have to see is in context. I don't give any... Uh, one more example I'd like to give, that the moment I was banned in UK, I was supposed to travel to Toronto, Canada. Immediately when the ban was effected, even my visa for Canada was cancelled. They also had a five-year visa. And I heard on the Toronto news, it says, here the preacher of, the, the preacher of hate, hear what he says. And then they show my clipping. That when you beat your wife, don't beat on the face, point number one. When you beat, you should not leave a mark on the body. Finish. Now they are showing a clipping, a portion of my answer. Anyone who hears these two statements, when you beat your wife, don't beat on the face. When you beat, you do not leave a mark on the body. It will, a person will think that Zakir is showing how to beat your wife without leaving a mark. It was a portion of my answer when a non-Muslim asked the question that doesn't the Quran say that you should beat your wife? And I said the Quran says in Surah Nisa, Chapter number four, verse number 34. It says that when your wife is disloyal to you, first you admonish her. Point number one. Admonish her first. Then you stop talking to her. Then stop sharing her bed. Then you can beat her lightly. The Arabic word is daraba. And when someone asked Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, the companion of the Prophet, he said it means like beating with a toothbrush. And further the commentary says, that the Prophet said, when you beat your wife, you should not beat on the face, point number one. Beat her in such a way that there's no mark left on the body. So this part was shown, and I continued. Islam and Quran never suggest wife bashing. It means you should beat with the toothbrush lightly. In modern terminology, I said beating with a handkerchief. Just a symbolic beating, such that you don't beat on the face, even the symbolic beating, and don't beat in a way in which there's no mark left on the body. That means it's an admonition. 
It's just a symbolic beating. So they cut off all the portion and show only two sentences of mine and they promote that Zakir is the person who's against women. So these things were also done regarding the death penalty for a person who changes the faith from Islam. But as I told you, in Islam, the standard rule is not death penalty for a Muslim who changes his faith to any other religion. Hope that answers the question. What are you going to do to continue to educate people so that Muslims around the world know that? Brother, this I have mentioned in several of my speeches. Now when you ask the question, I give the reply. There are tens of millions of people watching this program on Peach TV. They are being educated that death penalty is not the standard rule. But why will they believe in me? Because I've given the reference. I gave the reference of the sayings of the Prophet from Abu Dawood. I'm giving the reference for more authenticity. Abu Dawood, volume number 3, hadith number 4345. Now, when I'm giving reference, Abu Dawood, volume number 3, hadith number 4345, anyone can go and check up. In this hadith, the sayings of the Prophet, the Prophet pardoned the person who was a Muslim and changed to another faith. Now the difference between my answer and the other answers are, the other people just say without giving reference. Now when I give a reference, sayings of the Prophet, Abu Dawud, volume number 3, hadith number 4345, you can go and check up. So this gives more authenticity and I'm sure now there are millions of Muslims who will agree that death penalty is not the standard rule for any Muslim who changes his faith to any other religion? Hope that answers the question. This evening, due to the limitation of the satellite link. However, I would ask you now to join with me in thanking Dr. Knight for his speech and pass it back to Peace TV to finish the evening. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I remain James Langman and your president. Thank you. I would like to thank the Oxford Union, especially the president of the Oxford Union, Mr. James Langman, for making this event possible. And I really appreciate with the way they invited me for this talk. And at least now, the people of UK can really see a live telecast that I'm a person who gives the message of peace. In a live telecast, there is no editing. There is no manipulation. You can have more faith in these live telecasts rather than clippings from YouTube, which can be manipulated. I would like to thank the members of the Oxford Union once again. And I hope very shortly, once the exclusion order is reversed, I would like to personally come to the Oxford Union and meet the members of the Oxford Union. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. For the viewers of Peace TV, may I just give a background briefing for those who have joined in later on. We just heard before us a very enlightening talk by Dr. Zakir Naik addressing the Oxford Union UK on the topic Islam and the 21st century. This was an opportunity to present not only to UK and the people of U United Kingdom, but at the global level, because Oxford Union is not merely famous 
for presenting the views or concerns at the Oxford University itself, but on a wider level throughout the world of issues which are of global concern. Today, we have Islam being analyzed, being criticized, being appreciated. It is in the forefront of being understood, sometimes for the right reasons, sometimes for the right, wrong reasons. Today, the Oxford Union has provided us this opportunity to put before the world the views of what Islam stands for through the person of Dr. Zakir Naik, one of the leading orators on Islam and comparative religion in the world. And it's a pleasure that we could hear the different questions and viewpoints. And inshallah, we hope to have such programs in other places on the world where opportunities could be availed of and spread the message of peace further and further to every corner of the world, inshallah. We thank all of you all for being with us and sharing these historic moments of this unique debate at the Oxford Union. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.